over the last nine years, I have become a completely different person. And what started all that? Having my first baby, Harry. He turned nine this week. And it got me thinking on how my whole motherhood journey began. So this is the story of us. My God, where do you start from the beginning? <laughs> okay, I had Harry when I was 18. There was never a moment during my pregnancy where I thought, I can't do this, or I was nervous. I completely and wholly thought, I've got this. I don't care what anyone says. I don't need any help. But then on the flip side, you had Ali, who had never been around babies, didn't have any baby cousins. He was excited, but um, the unknown was probably a bit scary. I had really great pregnancy. I mean, no morning sickness, I had a bit of nausea. The only thing I craved was ice. Oh my God, I, I just remember needing it. I needed ice from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep. If we hadn't made any or we didn't have a bag of ice in, I would cry because I needed it. I think that's quite a normal craving actually. I've heard quite a lot of people wanting ice. It was a nice pregnancy. Labour was... I just remember the whole pregnancy saying to myself, you're not going to be one of those that screams. You're going to have it all together. You're going to have your breathing techniques and you're going to be really calm, which for the most part I was. It progressing very quickly. I had got to eight centimeters within a few hours and this is when it all changed. Daytime midwives were coming onto duty and I just remember her coming in and saying, your bump looks really strange. And I was just sat there like. <laughs> so they got a little scanner and they found that he was breech completely and his legs were up over his head and there was no way he was gonna fit through there. So I was rushed in for an emergency C-section. It didn't flap me. I wasn't like, oh my God, emergency C-section. I was kind of just like, okay. I'd been so confident this whole time, this whole pregnancy, this wasn't about to flap me now. I wasn't gonna be one of those hysterical people that are like, I can't do this. So within half an hour, he was out and I didn't hold him straight away. Looking back now, was that something, uh, a bonding thing? I don't know. We didn't have that instant meet where I had him on my chest and um, I, I was able to see him. Next thing I know, I see Ali holding the baby. I was happy. I was definitely happy that it was all over and he was here safely. I didn't feel any overwhelmingly strong emotions at the time. So I was keeping my cool. I was definitely keeping my cool. I wanted to breastfeed. For the first time since finding out I was pregnant, this was something that was out of my control. He had a very, very bad tongue tie. It made it very uncomfortable for me and I just remember t saying to myself, you need to just get over it and do it because the health visitors want you to breastfeed and the midwives want you to breastfeed and the whole world wants you to breastfeed so you're gonna just do it the first two weeks were just agony for both him for me for ali for my parents and it was just difficult and i wasn't about to give in and be like i can't do this i didn't want to be a statistic a young mum who can't cope who's always asking for help I just didn't want to be tarred with the same brush or put into a category or put into a box. I wanted to show everyone I could do it. I was perfectly capable. He had his tongue tie and everyone was reassuring me, he's gonna be fine. He's gonna latch after this. Well, he didn't. That was the first time that I had to admit defeat and say, this isn't good for him. It's not good for me. He needs to go onto formula. And that broke my heart. We lived with 
my parents for eight weeks which was nice i was still recovering from having the c-section and it was nice to have that extra support and eventually we found our own place for any 18 year old moving out and having to pay your own bills and get your own food that's a big thing add a baby on top of that you would have thought that that would make me nervous no 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 i can do this i'm good first time i realized that i might actually be feeling something a little bit darker than i was letting on was when we took harry for his first holiday just me Ali and the baby I started to crack big time even then I didn't truly understand what I was feeling or or why and we got there and it was stupid o'clock in the morning it was like two in the morning and I remember walking into the chalet and just being like there isn't a travel cot here. Something inside me just snapped. I was just so upset. I was like, why haven't they put a travel cot here? They knew we had a baby. The next thing that just pushed me over the edge was um, my phone not working. I couldn't contact my mum. And I kept saying to Ali, she's gonna be so worried about us. She's gonna be so worried. Looking back now, I actually think it was me I was worried that I couldn't get hold of my mum to ask her questions if I needed to about the baby. When I look back at that time, I do think, wow, my mental health started to show a lot earlier than when I was diagnosed with postnatal depression. So we got home from this holiday and I suddenly decided I needed to go to work. I needed to go back to work. I had had Harry five, six months prior and I remember thinking to myself, it will be good for me. I need to get away from the house and get away from the baby. I went back to work in September. That is really when things got a little bit dark for me. <sighs> it's so horrible to think about because I look at Harry now, I could never imagine feeling like that. I remember being at work and not necessarily missing him, but knowing that I was soon to be going back there um, to be a mum and cook dinner and, and do that, that kind of bummed me out. That's when I started to think, you should not be feeling like this. I just remember one day being at work, maybe a month later, I woke up that day and I did not feel good. I just remember, a customer saying to me, how are you today? And I just looked him dead in the eye and walked off, walked upstairs, sat down in the staff room, that was it. I just knew, it just all clicked. After that, it all started to get better. After I opened up and just realized that no one is gonna think that I was being silly or being over dramatic because I am quite dramatic sometimes. I spoke to the doctor and um, I just said this is how I'm feeling. Why is this happening? And she explained about postnatal depression and how it can hit pretty much at any time. I don't like to think that I had postnatal depression because I was young or unable to cope. I think there were so many things that played into that, you know, moving out, doing it, just me and Ali, um, trying to act a little bit older than I was, maybe. I had to, I had to let it out and I did and I felt great that was hard to adjust to, to my emotions, to um, waking up in a different mood every day, you know. Me taking that time to make sure I was making a bond for me and Harry, that was what was most important. Let me just tell you a little bit about Harry when he was little. Oh God, if you want like the perfect poster child that was him. He slept, he ate, 
he was very laid back he still is whatever toys i put around him he wouldn't really move even when he started to walk and crawl he just sat and he was just so happy all the time oh, it makes me all gushy inside when i think about it he was lovely and i think him being like that is actually why i didn't realize I had postnatal depression earlier. I think if he had been mega clingy and cry and um, overly needy, I mean, all babies are needy, obviously, I would have cracked a lot earlier. And so every year on his birthday, I do get quite emotional and I always reminisce about how my motherhood journey started and how our mother and son relationship has evolved. He really is such a special boy, not being biased or anything. He's incredibly handsome and smart and funny and silly and he is so patient with his brother and his sister who can be a bit of a handful sometimes. He doesn't mind taking the back seat when he needs to if Mason or Sophia need something he is happy to wait or do it himself I could just talk about him all day long because he's fab I really wanted to make this video in celebration of his ninth birthday and to just tell anyone who's out there who may be feeling in a slightly off place or is feeling a bit dark that there is a way out and all that I can recommend and all that I think back to now is I wish I had spoken to someone earlier when I first started feeling down. I always thought of mental health as a bit of a taboo and I didn't want to say something that might make someone think badly of me. I know that that's silly and the majority of the time people are nothing but supportive and having Harry there to brighten my days and make me laugh was just the icing on the cake. Cherry on the cake? Icing on the cake. I hope that you enjoyed listening to my kind of motherhood journey. We have Sophia and Mason in the mix and life is crazy, but it's good. I just wanna thank you for watching and I hope you liked it and I will see you next week for another video. Bye.